Another week in another squad cast. Welcome to the show. I'm Camille Salazar Hadaway. Joining me is Steve and Caboose. I'm always like Caboose Aaron, Caboose Aaron. Like, <laughs> I don't know. This is what happens when you have such a prominent like nickname. I just don't know which one to throw to. So I'm gonna switch, I'm gonna continue to switch it up every week. Okay? Just, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like Hit me with the mix up every single week, please. The mix up every week. And this week we have Paul, one of our writers, joining us. Uh, so we have a lot to discuss this week. But before we get into it, I want to talk to you guys. And uh, we had a quick dis discussion about the Fortnite event that's happening tomorrow. Yes. Um, and I just wanted to get your quick take on it because we are not Fortnite people. Mm. Uh, well, you well, guys are okay. checking out the Galactus event tomorrow. No, no, no. Yeah, I'll check it out. <laughs> oh, no. yeah, I'll check I it out. I think I'll watch it on stream, but <laughs> yeah, that's that's probably what I'll end up doing as well. Maybe right. I'll play it just to see it live. But um, but yeah, I mean, I, I was telling you, Camille, before we went live, I was like, thank God I'm not into Fortnite anymore because this season, like, seriously, it would have bankrupt me. With the amount of Marvel skins that they came out with, and like having a whole Marvel battle pass, there, like it's cool, it's cool. But at the same time, um, Venom has a gun. What's uh, what's happening? <laughs> the gun is also a skin. I I or don't. Symbiote, if you watch I don't that understand. <laughs> I don't. Oh God, symbiote! Get that out of here. Uh, yeah, no, seriously, that's that stuff was I weird. Know. I mean. It, I will say I like how like Fortnite or whoever is in charge at bringing these designs yeah. into the game is staying like mm -hmm. really faithful to like the iconic designs of the characters, yeah. you know? Yeah. Like Wolverine looks like Wolverine. Venom looks like they Venom. They're in trying minus to... the gun, yeah. Minus the gun. Minus the gun. Minus yeah. Venom <laughs> with a gun. So uh cool. we're pretty accurate. So Paul Caboose, no, myself, no. Steve, are you gonna switch it up on us? I'm in. Yeah, okay. I'm, I'm gonna go check it out. Uh, I was saying before we started rec uh, this recording, we were. Uh, I'm I'm down to just go in and try for the first time on new consoles. Uh, really? I have yet yeah. to, I have yet to jump in and see how it looks on the Xbox Series X. So I'm, I'll jump in, see how it is. I mean, it's Galactus. I have to go see it, right? Yeah. Right. They, they always nail the, these kinds of. Things. Sorry. Do you play Fortnite usually? I used to, but then the whole like. It became like building competitions, and I just wasn't about it. Yeah, same, same. so I, I bounced out like, mm -hmm. you know, midway through the last series, uh, like season right. one. Um, yeah. So I, I I'm down to go check it out again. And that's the Why thing. Not? I feel like we're all going to tune in um, and and stop by, say hello to the community because of this event, and then we're just going to close the door and pop right back out. But that's it's okay. Yeah. It's okay because we are Fortnite <laughs> people, and luckily for us, we're not talking Fortnite today in depth in the show. We're actually going to be talking about a few other topics. Let me give you the rundown. We're talking about the PlayStation 5, PlayStation's biggest launch. PlayStation teases uh, answer to Game Pass. That's going to be interesting. How huge is Cyberpunk 2077? I don't know. I think Caboose knows the answer to that. And 2020 Gaming Reflections. We're going to ask our friend Paul all about what he liked about the year. All right. Uh, chat, you know the discussions. You know what we're talking about. Let it manifest in your head what you want to say and then just type it out in chat. Or you could even clip some funny moments and then let us know on our socials at Squad State. All right, let's head right into it with the PlayStation 5, which is now PlayStation's biggest launch. Is that right, Steve? That's what they're saying. Yeah, last week, uh, Sony published a tweet thanking the community for making the launch of the PS5 a very successful one. Spoiler alert, yeah, it's pretty big. Um, <laughs> In in the uh, in the tweet they said quote we want to thank gamers everywhere for making the PS5 launch our biggest console launch ever uh, end quote and um, you know a couple weeks back during our uh, PS5 impressions episode we discussed that although it appeared to be really successful we didn't really have any sales numbers to go off of uh, well recently uh, VG charts reported that Sony sold an estimated 1.2 million to uh, 2.5 million units wow. worldwide when combining. Uh, it's two launch dates. Again, they did a staggered release. So on November 12th, obviously, they uh, released in U.S., Canada, Mexico, and a couple of other places. And then worldwide a week later on November 19th. Um, if you wanted to kind of break it down, they did say that specifically in Canada, sales were roughly between 95 
thousand and a hundred and ten thousand units, and then it kind of goes on and snowballs into different regions. Uh, they also said that uh, overall the base PS5, which includes the disk drive, uh, was far more popular than the mm. digital edition, selling uh, roughly around seventy-five percent of the total units. But it's also important to keep in mind that there were rumors going around that Sony just wasn't manufacturing a lot of the digital edition consoles, so it's kind of oh, uh, like if that's very... like a result of that, exactly. Or... Like, <laughs> yeah, of course, of course. The other one would be popular because that's the one that people could actually find uh, right. while on the pre-order. Um, and I think the most impressive or interesting note to take away from this is that in PlayStation's tweet, it says, quote, our biggest console launch ever. However, we can kind of extrapolate that they really mean the biggest console launch in history because the previous record holder was the PS4, which sold uh, 2.1 million units again, during oh. its staggered launch in 2013. So they broke their own record and uh, humbly, I guess, just said that, you know, they had the biggest uh, console base. launch again. Yeah. 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 Um, or, so or uh, yeah. Kind of... didn't do their research and they're like, eh, we'll just say in PlayStation instead of, <laughs> no, sure. in the world. Yeah. That, <laughs> that could also be, very well be it. Um, yeah, I just kind of want to get your guys' thoughts. Like, did you see this coming? This is pretty huge. Uh, so I'm I'm looking at the I'm looking at the calculations. Okay, um, right. and Ooh, and now you're wearing the glasses. Let's go. Let's assume. Let's assume. Even though this is not correct, it's sold globally. But let's assume that the sales numbers, like we're if we're looking at just the U.S. dollar, right? So it's it's yeah. costs at five hundred dollars. Um, if we're thinking on the high end, you multiply that by what'd you say that it was two point five million. Uh, is, is there high estimate? Highest, yeah, yeah, yeah. So if we're going on the high end of everything, they have potentially made 1.25 billion, wow. <laughs> uh, which is insanity <laughs> to have made in less than a month's time. But I mean, yeah, you could you could see you could see the demand for this console. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. it's, it's crazy. A lot of it has to do with the fact that of course, some stupid bots and some scalpers out there who are getting their hands on these things and reselling them for a crap load of money. Um, mm -hmm. but yeah, you know, there is a demand for people to want to get their hands on these consoles, uh, specifically with the PlayStation five. And it's a reflection of that is how much it's sold. So yeah. I mean, congrats to them. It's it's a big, you know, it's a big launch. It's got a good lineup of games between Spider-Man, you know, you got Ratchet and Clank coming up, Demon's Souls, and then all the backwards compatible games that you can play on PlayStation 5. I still haven't tried Ghost of Tsushima or God of War, but everyone that I've seen play those games has seen significant improvements, which is awesome. Um, so, like, the, and, you know, multiply games like Assassin's Creed Valhalla is there, Cyberpunk on the way, which we will talk about later. Um, so it's just, it's a big launch, a big lineup of games, like huge AAA games for people to enjoy. And so, I mean, yeah, it's, this is, it's pretty awesome. And uh, I, I mean, I've said this before, uh, including the Series X as well. This has been like one of the biggest leaps in technology that we've had from console generation, from one console generation to the next, you know, these SSDs and just the sheer power that's put into these consoles. It's pretty crazy. I yeah. will never be able to go back to like old gen seeing how oh. fast things load on next gen, you know, playing Spider-Man Miles Morales and loading into the game in like 30 seconds tops from the main menu of the PlayStation five into the actual gameplay is insane. Like it's, it's so cool. And you just, you don't experience that anywhere else, you know, like that's, that's only on the next gen. So yeah. <laughs> truly is a great generation um even like you know the xbox series x xbox sold of their new consoles i think it was like something like 1.3 or 1.4 uh, million uh, yeah. you, mm -hmm. just under a million of what playstation did but that's still relatively good considering that both companies were also faced with a uh, low um amount of units available to sell <laughs> so sure. like think about like the numbers and the amount of money what could have been for for both of these companies in terms of what they could have sold is just amazing to me i think it's really um 
worth noting that that just shows that the gaming industry is just flourishing. Like the people are saying consoles are dying. Um, no, no, there's no. So many- who is saying I don't know. that? There's no <laughs> way. A lot of like that's people- crazy talk, you know. Mm-hmm. Race before this was all about the graphics, right? So a lot of pieces, right. you know, are like, okay, well, why would you play a console now? You with streaming, you have more people going to PC because they're streaming on their PC, they're playing on their PC. Mm-hmm. Consoles are dying, but as we talked about when we talked about both the Xbox Series X and the PlayStation Five. When we're looking at the new console generation, it's not so much about the graphics, which are beautiful on both consoles. It's Mm -hmm. more about the capability um, and what they're able to do and what developers could do with the new attributes that um, the consoles have. Like if you look at uh, Quick Resume, right? Mm -hmm. Um, So we're going into another wave of what consoles actually mean. And, And to me, it's just refreshing to see that that means that they're not going anywhere. We're probably going to be seeing like generations of PlayStations, generations of For Xbox. Sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, but yeah. I want to get back to what something Caboose mentioned. You know, PlayStation had this amazing lineup of launch titles. Do you guys feel like that was the main attributes? Plus, obviously, their legacy um, for why they so sold so many consoles. I think it's a bit of both, right? Like PlayStation as a brand has become like the place to play games for a lot of people. Um, right. but then at the same time, they did have a really strong lineup. So I, I could see a scenario where a consumer was really thinking about getting a PlayStation five simply because of the fact that they got something like demon souls or Spider-Man miles Morales, you know, funny enough, there are still a lot of people to this day who ask me, they're like, Hey, is miles Morales on PS4? I thought it was just on PS five. And I'd like to imagine wow. that there are a lot of people out there that bought PlayStation fives thinking that the game wasn't on the PS4. And that's because that's because I've talked I talked about this before when they revealed that game way back in June there was no yeah. mention no not even an inkling of an idea that the game was ever going to come to the PlayStation 4 and I feel like that was the impression that a lot of people got from that game when it was initially revealed and so yeah. since then they were just under the assumption that it was a PS5 exclusive no one knew it was even coming to PS4 and by the time that they were marketing that it was coming out in two months, you know? So, like, everyone... Our marketing right there, though. Yeah. Oh, for sure. PlayStation knew exactly what they were doing with that. Oh, it was for sure. Brilliant. Yeah. It, it was absolutely intentional. Um, But, yeah, so, like, I, I could see that there are a lot of consumers out there who probably wanted to get their hands on a PlayStation 5 simply because of some launch titles like those two games that I just mentioned. But there's also some people out there who just, they want to stick with the PlayStation brand. They want to get the new tech, the new hardware. You know, there's always that um that fear, like that FOMO that a lot of people have. Like a friend of mine, he's ha- he's feeling that seriously. Like he's like, God, I, I kept telling myself, I don't need these next-gen consoles. I'm not too worried about getting them. Now I see everyone that has them and I really want to get my hands on them, you know? And so... I'm sure that there were a lot of people who were feeling that and they were like, nope, I got a pre-order. I got to get my hands on this thing right now. Um, and so, yeah, I see I see both sides of it. Yeah, it's I, I funny. Think, it's sorry. It's, it's just funny that you mentioned yeah. that, uh, Caboose, because I think, like, I play, I mentioned this on the show, I play Call of Duty every Monday with a group of my friends and we're all split between, like, Xbox, PC, and PlayStation. Mm-hmm. But my friends that had, like, both Xbox and PlayStation that don't really play games outside of Warzone, not even like Call of Duty, Modern Warfare, like multiplayer, like Warzone. (laughs) They were even like very anxious to get the next consoles, which is just crazy to me because it's like, you guys don't play anything. You don't have any reason (laughs) to pour your money into that right now because Mm -hmm. Warzone is still running the best on PlayStation 5 and, uh, sorry, PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, right? So mm-hmm. so it's just interesting that you mentioned that. Sorry, Steve, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, it's to, to go back to your initial question, I think this is the first generation where people can transfer from one console, like from the PS4 to the PS5, for instance, and not have to worry about losing everything that they've amassed over this. Yeah last mm-hmm. generation right uh i think it was a lot easier for people to look at both consoles and say okay well which one am i going to pick if someone has played their entire generation on ps4 ps5 is a no-brainer because they're bringing yeah. over all their games they don't have to abandon their library on this mm-hmm. older piece of hardware so seeing these numbers i'm not really that surprised but you you did bring up a really good point with like what could have this number have been 
if we didn't live in this like COVID age where manufacturing were constricted in a way. Yeah. And people were also like worrying about their wallets and stuff. Yeah, just that to your point, I, I'm, I'm personally not a console gamer whatsoever, but I am, sure. I, I'm, not, <laughs> well, I'm not surprised by the, uh, the PS5 popularity either, right? Because like for 500 bucks, you're getting a really like beefy uh, system and they have yeah. like really good yeah. exclusives. And like, if you were just your average gamer and you're just looking for like an affordable place to play your games, it's crazy, right? And when you think about the PS4 to the PS5, the actual like jump between the quality and the like, the, the power it brings is much better than like getting an iPhone 11 to an iPhone 12, right? Like the, the differences between the two consoles are crazy and you're getting like the best value as you can for that. So like, I totally understand the appeal that like people would yeah. want this uh, console. So I think, I think you make a, a great point there in regards to just like the affordability of it. Now mm -hmm. I'm not like, I'm not a, a junkie when it comes to PCs. Like I just bought a new PC. I was telling you guys off, off stream. I just bought a PC, but I bought like a pre-built one with all the stuff that like it might need, you know, but I know that there are plenty of people out there who are maybe not as into it uh, even in that sense. And just their computer experience, if you will, is just like having a laptop, you know, like they're not so worried about playing games on their PC where they want to play games is on a console. And so in that sense, rather than spending like a thousand, fifteen hundred on a brand new PC with all the bells and whistles, you spend 500 bucks for a PS5 that's like close to the power of a good PC and you're like, you're getting a huge bang for your buck there. Uh, so, so I can see why, you know, again, there is that appeal because people just, they want to play their games in one place, you know, and they want it, they want their, their games in one place. They want their, their computing or their, their PC stuff in another place. Uh, and they like to keep that separate. And so, yeah, in that, in that sense, people want to get their hands on a, a series X or a series S even, or a, or a PlayStation 5 so that uh, they just have an affordable place to play some good games that look real good. So do you guys think this news, because you, you got to think about their competitor hearing this news that this is the best selling console for PlayStation, which is mean mm -hmm. just, you know, of all time, right? So um, what do you think, do you think Xbox or Microsoft anticipated this what do you think is kind of going through their minds right now um in terms of how to deal with this news going forward in terms with their hardware xbox is playing the long game uh they they they'd have to have known yeah. that they weren't gonna win this console generation out of the gate um they just they, they have fallen so far behind <laughs> from the xbox one uh, ps4 generation but now i think they've got a new focus uh with game pass and being just as pro consumer as they possibly can be and uh they're they're headed in the right direction we'll see what's going to happen i know for sure once it's announced that 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 new elder scrolls is going to be an xbox console exclusive which it's probably going to come to pc but once it's announced that it'll be a console exclusive then things are going to start to get a little bit interesting mm -hmm. um but yeah like they, they had to have known coming out of the gate that playstation was just going to sell hand over fist more than xbox um because yeah they just they'd fallen so far behind i mean if you look at like the 360 to the ps3 era like yeah the 360 won that generation but the ps3 there was still a lot of people with ps3s you know like there was still a lot of people who right. were still playing their games and had playstations you yeah. know so leading into the playstation 4 xbox one generation you know a lot of people were more willing to make that switch uh, because there was still quite a bit of a player base there on PlayStation. But with that last console generation leading into this one, like Sony was very far ahead. And, you know, just to add to that, when you think of, you know, the people that had the PlayStation 3 when Xbox won that console generation with the 360, there was a lot. And I think that is the power of the legacy brand of PlayStation. Mm -hmm, right. Now we're seeing Xbox building on to their legacy um, to become a brand of their own that really stands for something completely different. I think before they were always trying to be beat PlayStation or be PlayStation. Um, so it's great that we're kind of in this new sense of like identity i think for xbox mm -hmm. where we're really gonna see i think amazing things from them um sure. and it's gonna be interesting to see how playstation either adapts to that or how they don't adapt to that and continue to do what they want to do
Go, 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 go.